this video, I'm going to really give a good demonstration with this brake taping out about how it works. The drum pulls out. What you're looking at here is a 42 year old winch. YouTube Hans here. Um, I've been doing videos on my home shop and some other projects. Um, I happen to have a, a, a Jeep problem, a hobby. I'm going to show you today what I'm doing on my Warren 8274 winch. Um, I picked this thing up from my cousin. Um, it's going to go on my CJ5. Um, and I've been, I've been looking around online and there's a lot of information on these things out there, but I didn't find anything that went into a lot of detail about the brake, at least not to the level I wanted to go. And towards the end of the video, you'll see it actually in action when I have it inserted back into here with the top of the case off. It'll make perfect sense how this brake works. And I'm, I'm also drilling and tapping the end of this hole in this video. And I'll be putting a cover on here too. And that helps this thing from coming off. I made a stand for it. If you're gonna, if you're gonna work on one of these, I highly recommend it. This, this puppy weighs about 80 pounds, maybe 85 pounds. Um, and it's uh, it's got a round bottom on it, you know. It mounts to the front. All right, there we go. So once you have this retainer up, then the only thing to do is pry it out. Okay, we're moving. Okay. You need to hold this thing um, with the shaft vertical because of the balls that are in it. So any way that you can hold it, um, I'm gonna use this chuck and I'm gonna grab on a spot here that I think is safe. Okay, so I've got I got this thing tightened down. So this will be this will be nice. I'm going to show a little bit about how the cam works on the brake for the 8274. So I have this mounted in my lathe just because I can hold it and it won't turn. Okay, this 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 side here is 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 locked up straight to this piece, so there, it's a solid connection. This side, this side is locked to this half of the cam. So you watch that locks it up. Okay, that's that's how the brake works. The other pieces that we have here is we have a this is a bushing, and then this this is a seal right here. It looks like a metal disc, but it's actually a seal. Um, and you can see below there that smooth surface. So okay, now I have an understanding of how this brake works. And I couldn't find this anywhere showing it like this. I want to take this thing apart and just see what kind of condition it's in. Okay, drum roll. I saw what looked like pretty nice friction discs or brake pads on this thing. So I'm, I'm actually expecting this to be looking good. Now this this winch is um, 
in good condition for its age and it's coming apart better than than a lot of the ones that I've read up on. But still sticking a little bit. So got some oil on there. I don't want to get too much oil on it. This is a break, so oil is uh, oil is your enemy. Looks like it's never been used. I this is an old winch, but I have a feeling that it hasn't been used maybe ever. You know, I'll probably hit this with a little sandpaper just to knock the rust off of it. Yeah, but this is, um, Somebody spray painted it at one point. You can see it on the brake disc. So this thing hasn't been used. Um, look at that right there. Zoom in on that. It says uh, made in Japan. How about that, huh? This is a 1979 model. What you're looking at here is a 42 year old winch. It was made in Japan, or that part was anyhow. I'm gonna get these balls cleaned up and put it back together. I don't have anything to do. You know, I'm gonna show this to it it says made in japan on uh on that side too you can see it right there um, kind of tells me that this winch has definitely never been used because the balls rotate right there so this spring is uh one of the things that can wear out on them um, I guess if that were to happen, then the winch wouldn't release. Um, well, this, this, this one's releasing, so I don't think that there's any need to replace this spring. You know, it's, I, I'm not gonna, this, this, this winch is not gonna see a lot of use with me. I just like to try to get uh, get nice things if I can. Um, because, well, they last longer and if you ever do want to sell them, it's easier to sell or barter because you have something that other people are um, it's desirable. So, the Warren 8274 winch is desirable. So, so I wanted it. Whether or not I needed it, don't ask me that question. That's beside the point. Well, before I put this together, I'm going to be drilling and tapping a hole in here and replacing that C-clip with, with a large custom-made washer and uh, a bolt tapping into the end of the shaft. It's got an O-ring right here. Okay, well, over to the lathe. Okay, what I'm doing here is I have the brake shaft in the chuck and I've got a, a 5 16 cobalt drill and I'm gonna 
drill for tapping a 3816 thread. Okay, this is my carbide bit. Here I'm tapping the brake shaft and this has turned out to be very difficult. This is a hardened steel shaft and I, I, I probably spent an hour drilling a hole an inch deep in this with my carbide drill bit. And now getting a tap started is the next challenge. All right, my first weld on attempt didn't work. I'm gonna try a, a shorter nut, a jam nut, uh, so that way I can get better weld penetration. This wrench is just to hold the nut in place. Okay, so here's drum roll. It's moving and getting encouraged. Excited, as you can tell this might be hot that that is a broken tap <laughs> so that tap broke and I think part of the problem is I don't have a carbide tap for a hardened steel so to make a larger hole, I need to know what I can get away with um, and still meet specs. So uh, a 3816 bolt, you can have up to a, a 321 hole. So I'm gonna put it back up in the lathe and bore it out a little bit more to that. That'll help me tapping. Checking the diameter. Okay, so I'm gonna try tapping this again. Um, but now what I have is I have a tap guide and this this thing is, is held in place. Um, I think, you know, I'm, I'm really pushing it here with this. I have a high speed steel tap. I really shouldn't be doing this with that but this should help so we're gonna see how this goes this time i put a chamfer on the lead into the hole so far so good here i think i'm actually gonna get a tapped hole all right it's time to put this baby back together so the the cam for the brake it looked like it had a little grease on there so I'm putting a small amount of grease on it this is um, bicycle grease don't tell anyone I don't want to get all traces of any any contamination off of here um, Using your bare fingers is the best way to get a final wipe on a surface. So 
let's see if I can get this started. And my first challenge is getting this back on the shaft. Um, shoot. Let's see. It's a beautiful fit. That, this is perfect. It's just like absolute perfection. This is high quality. This is a high quality winch. There's just no mistaking it. Putting a little grease on the whole ring here. You know, I don't know. I they sell rebuild kits for these, but this thing's old, but just hasn't been used. And I, I just don't think I'm gonna bother with replacing any of this stuff. Now I need to make sure the other parts fit on here. Smooth as can be. Oh yeah, in fact that's that's actually a loose fit. Yep, so I what's actually sticking here wasn't probably wasn't the the bore, it was the the, the key. I'm gonna take this and clean it up and put a little fresh silver paint on it while I have it apart. Okay, um, I've got to measure this because there's a cardboard spacer that gets made that I don't have. I'm gonna just make one out of metal. Um, that's 1.75 OD. Um, I hit this surface with uh, brake cleaner because it is a brake. And you know, I might might hit these with the brake cleaner too before I put this back together. All right, so I cleaned off these brake pads with a little brake cleaner. They um, changed colors. Even though this hadn't been used, they were a little dirty. So the other thing I don't want to be wrong is put this together backwards. Um, so, because you can get the teeth backwards for the pawl. Got some rare earth magnets here. These magnets seem to be working. Um, put a couple more here. Look, I can move it around and they, they pretty much stay. So the way this washer works, I'm just noticing is that it fits inside the balls. If I take the spring off for a second, look at that, there, they're held in place. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right, so this thing's back together. Now I'm going to make I'm going to make a a big giant washer for the end of this thing. I'm gonna leave the C-clip on there. <clears throat> so I'm gonna be flushing the oil out of this.
got this spacer I made that it's going to go like that. And this, this holds, looks to me like, you know, this is a, a seal right here, th this lower one. So you need to, if you don't have this spacer here, it won't press in. So this is my DIY um, cardboard spacer. Okay. This goes in there and the keyhole locks down on the end of this shaft here. There we go. Okay. Now when when this gets fully seated, um, that this piece is gonna drop down. My metal spacer has bottomed out, so my seal is installed, so I gotta cut that off. Okay. If I heard, hold this and turn the drum, that locks up the brake. So, Here's what happens when the way this brake works, when the motor is not turning, the motor stopped, right? And this, this piece is fixed. The drum pulls out, like if you snatch on the cord and the cord's coming out down here. So um, right now when I press the direction that drum rotates, that would simulate pulling out. That's how the brake works. So that engages the brake because this doesn't move. Okay, so that's the that's the explanation for the thing to see. Um, here, I'll do it. I'll do it once more here. See how that works. And then you can see this whole thing can float. So, so we're back together, and I just gotta fix the pawl. So I'll do that quick. The way this spring works, there's an edge in there, a rib basically. And you get it in there. And then you have to wind up the spring. And it goes like that. That's all it is, right? And then when you pull on the paw, it just, just goes like that. Trick here is I got to get that on there. There we go. Okay, I've emptied 250 milliliters of 30 weight oil into here. I'm just letting the cup drain. Um, I read, I read online 250 milliliters, and for warm weather, you're on the 30 weight. Um, <clears throat> I'm in Minnesota, um, but this is going on my on my Jeep, my CJ5 Jeep, and I, that thing is summer fun vehicle only. Uh, you don't need to go crazy with the sealer. Okay, so now, set this on here. I wish I had a third hand right now, I'll tell you that.
All right, so now, perfect. Um, this is tight, but this can still go in, and I didn't push it in any when I did that. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I may do another one on this winch. I have the Albright contactor to put into it, and, uh, and I have to get it mounted on my Jeep. Um, but this is the, the first one, so I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe, and, uh, and I love to get comments on my videos as well. Thanks, and have a good day.